Summary of the Sound and the Fury by William Faulkner Benji, a guy who is deaf and has a mental disability, is the initial narrator of the story. He is a man who sees time as a series of confusing thoughts. His parents are Jason Compson III and Caroline Compson. His siblings are Quinton, Jason IV, and Caddy. The Compsons are an old, wealthy family from Jefferson, Mississippi, in the South. After the Civil War, the Compsons lost money, morals, and their minds. Jason III is a drinker who tries to be thoughtful but doesn't work, Caroline is an obsessive-compulsive hysteric, and their kids have a lot of problems. The three brothers' different obsessions with Caddy are what make the story so tense. The first part takes place on Benji's 33rd birthday, which is the day before Easter 1928. Luster, Benji's teenage black caretaker, and he hang out at a golf course. Many things there remind Benji of his past, like when his grandmother died, Quinton and Caddy playing in a stream, Benji's attack on a passing schoolgirl, Caddy's first kiss, her first time wearing perfume, and her wedding. In this scene, Benji kisses a guy with a red tie while Miss Quinton, his niece and Caddy's child from a previous relationship, talks. After that, Luster takes Benji home for dinner. His brother Jason makes fun of him, but Diley, the Compson's helper, is nice to him. The second part is told from Quinton's point of view and takes place at Harvard 18 years earlier, on the day that Quinton killed himself. Quinton's story is also broken up by his thoughts and memories. Quinton can't sleep because his grandfather's watch keeps ticking. He thinks this is a sign of family pride. It was Caddy's loss of her virginity that Quinton says caused her to lose the Compson prize. He can't get rid of the memories of Caddy's sexuality and Quinton lying to his father that he and Caddy had slept together. He remembers meeting Caddy's first boyfriend and then her husband, and how his father told him that the idea of being a virgin doesn't mean anything. In this scene, Quinton breaks his watch, but it keeps running, and he stands on a bridge while thinking about dying. Later, he buys bread for a young Italian girl and gets beat up by her brother. He then rides with a cocky, sexual Harvard boy and strikes him. When Quinton gets back to his Harvard dorm room, he leaves his watch there and leaves. The next part is told by Jason IV and takes place the day before Benji's story. Jason, who is mean and angry, works at a farm supply store and steals money that Caddy, who has been shamed and dumped by her family, sends to Miss Quinton, whose daughter she has never met. Jason thinks a lot about the past and Caddy because Caddy's husband offered Jason a job at the bank but took it back when they got split because of Caddy's child with another man. In this scene, Jason gets into a fight with Miss Quinton, his mother, his boss, and forces Quinton to sign a money order. Later, he goes after Miss Quinton and her boyfriend, but they leave him alone many miles from town. Jason goes home and picks on Diley and Luster. During dinner, he has another fight with Quinton. The last part starts with Diley getting the house ready for Easter Sunday, which is the next day after Benji's part. When Jason wakes up, Miss Quinton has taken all of his money, including a lot of the money he stole from her. Diley, Lester, and Benji go to an Easter church service while Jason runs off. While this was going on, Jason was being chased by Quinton through another town, where he was attacked by an old man and failed to find Miss Quinton. At the same time, Lester takes Benji for a carriage ride, but he goes off track, and Benji starts to howl. Jason shows up and hits Lester and Benji. Once Lester goes back to the way it was, Benji feels calm and like everything is back to normal. That's where Faulkner tells us about the Combson family's past and what happened to them after the book. Benji is sent to a hospital by Jason after Caroline dies, and the Combson house is sold. After many years, a librarian finds a picture of Caddy in a magazine and gives it to Diley. However, Diley doesn't want to save Caddy because she is better off without Jefferson. About the author William Faulkner was born in 1897 in New Albany, Mississippi. He grew up in Oxford, which is not far away. Even though he was a smart kid who could read before he started school, Faulkner did not finish high school. He also did not finish college. He started at the University of Mississippi in 1919, 
but left in 1920. Faulkner started writing poetry and stories after learning about Mississippi's past and hearing stories from his family. His mother, grandma, and longtime African-American nanny had a big impact on him, and their lives gave him a lot to write about when he wrote about sexuality and race. By 1925, he had moved to New Orleans, Louisiana, where he wrote his first book, Soldier's Pay, and had it published. Faulkner married Estelle Oldham in 1929. They had been together when he was a young man at Oxford. He had enough money to buy them a house in Oxford. He called it Rowan Oak. During the 1920s, he released a number of novels and short stories, but it was hard for him to make a living as a writer. In 1932, he and Oldham moved to Culver City, California, where Faulkner had a successful career as a Hollywood screenwriter until the late 1950s. Faulkner won the Pulitzer Prize twice for his novels A Fable and The Reavers. He also won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1949, but he didn't like the fame that came with it. He used some of his prize money to start the P.N. Faulkner Award for Fiction, which is still a prestigious award for American writers today. William Faulkner had a heart attack and died at age 64 in 1962. He had written 13 books and many short stories. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.